about finding the self. So uh, where do we have to go to find the self? Do we need to go on a voyage? Do we need to go on a quest? Do we need to travel to the other side of the world to find the self? Is it under the sea? Is it in outer space? Where are you? Where am I? You may have asked a question like that. You may have said to people, you know what? I feel like I don't know myself. Is that true of you? Do you feel like you don't know who you are? If that's the case, then tonight I'm going to help you to be able to find yourself again. But the first thing we need to do if we want to truly find the self is stop searching because yourself is not in Africa or India. Well, unless you live there. Yourself is not uh, in Canada or at the North Pole. Again, unless you live there, yourself is not a geographical location that you have to search and go traveling to find. The self is not something that you need to look for as to discover. The self is something you have to create. But the first thing we have to do in order to find ourselves is stop the age-old practice of shape-shifting. Are you a shape-shifter? Some people will pride themselves on being a chameleon. They say, I'm the type of person, and no matter who I'm around, I, I tend to get along and I just do whatever they want to do, and I'm just easygoing. But what can happen if we're too easygoing, we go with the flow too much, we can actually become a people-pleaser, right? So if you're an appeaser of people, a pleaser of men, then you're really nothing yourself except for whatever they want you to be. And so you're doing the song and dance for them so that they are approving of you. And then you go home at night and cry because you do not feel authentic. You do not feel complete. You do not feel centered. You do not know who you are. How do we stop this cycle? And how did we get here? Childhood trauma causes a split in the psyche. A split in the psyche means that we needed to figure out a way to cope with the extreme deprivation of love and approval that we had in the household we grew up in, perhaps, or in the household we live in now, perhaps. We needed to figure out how to get our needs met. And when the need you're trying to get met is love, approval, validation, you will change yourself. You will become a shapeshifter to appease the emotional abuser and neglector. The very person that's withholding the love from you now becomes the person who you try to please, who you try to appease. And now that makes you ultimately ultra controllable. And so you're going through life being controlled by that person and this could be your childhood. This could have been the way that you grew up, just constantly changing and morphing and animating to do whatever it was that you needed to do in order to please them so that they would be happy and you would be safe, so that you wouldn't get abused, so that you wouldn't be left behind, you wouldn't be neglected. It could be because of your fear of abandonment, because you were abandoned, or because emotionally they abandoned you, or because you just feared that they would if you didn't appease them, if you didn't act in a certain way. So you might have become the jester, the comedian, always making everybody laugh, always being charismatic. And that way, you kept everyone safe. You kept yourself safe because you kept your father, who was an abusive alcoholic when he drank, you kept him calm because you made him laugh. Or you could have been the, the personal maid, personal chef, and just cleaning everything to perfection as a kid, and just cooking dinner for everyone, taking care of the, the children, a parentized child, so that you could just make sure that everyone was okay, and mom and dad weren't going to abuse you or harm you. Maybe we just were afraid of abandonment. We didn't want to be ostracized. Maybe it's that our parents were actually uh, harsh emotionally. And so if you can see yourself to some degree in this and you realize that where you lost yourself 
was back in childhood when you developed this ability to become whatever you needed to be to please and appease everyone around you. And then you took that to school and it kind of worked. And then you took it into relationships and it kind of worked until it didn't. Because the people pleasers, the lack of self persons are the ones that are attracting the narcissists and the abusers the people pleasers, the, the morphers of the self are the ones that are attracting the sociopaths and the psychopaths. And then you're wondering, well, how did I end up with such a horrible person? Well, you're not responsible for the abuse. You're not responsible for someone else's bad behavior. But you are responsible for how you present yourself in the world. And it is inappropriate to continue to present yourself as an appeaser of others as if you're less important than they are, because you're not. So stop trying to please and appease all of these different people so that you won't be abandoned. So we have to change our mindset around these things, right? So, so if we're not going to be a people pleaser, then we have to be a people disappointer, I mean, what's the opposite of pleasing? Well, what we're looking for is balance. And yes, you will have to disappoint people, of course. But, but we're looking for balance. It's not to become the other extreme of a people pleaser, a rebellious uh, a rogue. But it's to become the happy balance, the medium, which is a person who understands that disappointment is a part of adult life. Again, a, a balanced individual understands that a disappointment is a part of adult life. And so we have the responsibility to sometimes be the bearer of bad news and let people know we're not interested in what they're interested in. We're not going to kowtow to what they want us to kowtow to. That's just a part of life. And they are responsible for being able to cope with the disappointment that you will now heap upon them by not doing everything they tell you to do. So we have to change our mindset around our fears. If you have a fear of abandonment that's keeping you in people-pleasing, it's causing you to abandon yourself. So it has to stop. Again, your fear of abandonment, ironically, is causing you to abandon yourself. So you're like, oh, no, 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 please don't leave me. I'll leave me. Where are you guys going? I'll come too and leave me behind. We got to stop. It makes no sense. And so how do we get over this fear of abandonment? Well, let's shift the paradigm. That is to change the way we look at it. Can you see abandonment as actually a good thing? Think about it. How could abandonment sometimes be a good thing. Abandonment can be healthy because if we allow people to abandon us, then the people that we're allowing to abandon us will include narcissists, psychopaths, sociopaths, abusers, and rank and file persons that just don't have anything in common with us the real us. You see, when you present yourself as authentic, you say, hey, this is just who I am. I am a guy who likes to go fishing and likes to, and likes to eat beef jerky and, and, and I watch uh, ESPN and I'm just authentic. Then someone comes along and they don't like fishing, but you don't change to please them. They might say, Ew, I don't like a person who likes fishing. I'm out of here. And they might leave you. Can you see how that's a good thing? Think about it. If they don't like fishing and you love fishing, then you don't want them to be close to you because they're not going to be a good friend to you. You need someone who has the same things in common as you. You've been wanting to have friends. You've been wanting authentic connections. The way to get authentic connections 
is to get some good old fashioned abandonment in. That's right. You heard me correctly. We need these people to abandon us. The people who have nothing in common with us, the people who are narcissists, the people that we don't even like. Because when we rely on the old skill of people pleasing, we're trying to keep people in our lives that we don't even like. Be honest. Do you even like all these people? You don't. So that is how illogical it is to keep trying to please and appease other folks. So what would happen if we were just right in the middle, just authentic? What would that look like? Well, 85% of the time, we would choose to do what we wanted to do over what someone else wanted us to do. 85% of the time, we would disappoint everyone. How is that going to work? Won't we be alone, abandoned by everyone with no friends? Well, maybe at first, because probably you have too many narcissists and abusers all around you. And you've been keeping them because you don't love yourself. So you're like, wow, let's keep a bunch of abusers around. Then I won't be alone. <laughs> to be temporarily alone could be the best thing that ever happened to you. Have, you. have you considered that? We have to clean house here. We've got all these people that are inauthentic connections and people that are they have, they're, they're abusers and they're, and they're users right? And, and, and they're taking, taking, taking from us. We need to clean house. So we have to get rid of all these takers that are in our sphere. And if that means that for a while, you have to be the only person in your sphere, you and your creator, that's okay. That's okay. Because that's not actually being alone, first of all. Second of all, try not to hate being with yourself so much. Try not to hate yourself so much to make it seem like you don't want to hang out with you. Like, oh no, then I would have to be with me. Oh, I don't want that. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. Remember, you are listening. Your inner child's listening. So it's abusive to say, I don't want to just be by myself. Because yourself says, ouch, that hurt. Does that make sense? So you're abusing the self to say you don't want to be with the self. It's okay to spend some time with yourself. It's healthy. It's healthy. And so in this meantime, you're being authentic and you're getting abandoned by all these people. And you should be also doing some abandoning of people because you're realizing, oh, I don't like these people. And now you have, let's say you have no one in your life. And now what, what will happen? Well, if you continue to be authentic, you will occasionally meet people who actually like the authentic version of you, especially when you're working on yourself and developing good qualities, such as being loving, empathetic, kind, generous. You have good qualities that, that need developing. And when you keep running away from being with yourself, you're missing the opportunity to develop the self. Does that make sense? So, so instead of running away from the self, allow yourself to have some time alone with all of these people out of your life. And then what will happen? Yes, you will attract your tribe. You see, once you're by yourself, you can now finally get working on your purpose, which is what you were supposed to be doing this entire time anyway. I don't know if you were mistaken. The purpose of your life is not to be a wife. But the purpose of your life is not to be a husband and a, or, or to find love. The purpose of your life is not to raise these kids. It's not the purpose of your life. Those are important aspects of your life, but those are roles you play. Being a parent is not your purpose. It's a role you play in life. The best parent is one who pursues his or her purpose in life and brings the kid along to watch. That's the best parent one who pursues their purpose and allows the kid to witness greatness unfold. 
because that makes an impact on our psyche. We say, my dad, he started his own business. He pulled himself up from the, his bootstraps. My mom, she, she was always out volunteering. Uh, you know, my, 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 my dad, he was a minister. My mom, she was always caring for others. When we see people who are in their purpose, those are our mentors. Those are the people we look up to. So be a good parent and stop focusing so much on the child and making the child your purpose. The child is not a god. They don't want to be worshipped by you. It's unnatural. Child wants to follow you. They came in, they're like, hey, what are we doing? Where are we going? They just got here. Okay, you're the guide. A parent is a guide. You can't guide your children if you're if you're not going anywhere. And so what, what we do is we exacerbate, we do the same thing that the narcissist taught us. Like the family is everything. The family is everything. So we just make them think that the, fa so you're training them and you, they think the purpose is the family. The purpose isn't this family. This family is something you created, right? Based on your relationship with whomever the father or the mother of these children is. That the, the purpose isn't the family. A lot of times this is something you created when you were a teenager or in your 20s. Okay, we cannot, these children cannot base their entire life on what you did here. Okay, so this is a little tribe, which is which is designed to raise children inside the tribe, but you play a role in your family. Your role is not your purpose. It is not who you are. It is not your identity. So, so how do we pick a purpose? Which will, which will become an essential part of our identity. How do we pick a purpose? How do we find our purpose? Well, it's something you choose. You choose your purpose. Write it down. I choose my purpose. Something you choose. So you should literally look at the options available. Look at your gifts. You take a sum of everything and, and the amount of time that you have to work within. And you decide which direction you would like to go. What, what do I want to do? What would I like to be able to accomplish that I feel will be beneficial to myself and others? Give me a little joy and be worth the suffering that I'll have to undergo to be successful. That's how you choose a purpose. It's what you want. It's what you want. And, and, and what's interesting is your values are also tied to what you want them to be. And the values are the self. So the self is not something we find. It's something we create. Put that in your notes. The self is not something you find. It's something you create. It is not a discovery that you will find in the forest somewhere. It is something you build from the raw materials that you have. Your life, your body, your time, your energy, your talents. These are raw materials that you were given. Make something out of them. We're all waiting. We're waiting for you to build something. And you're running around behind this person, this man over here, this woman over here, trying to attach yourself to someone. Because you don't have any identity. But we're waiting for you to build your own identity. You have to actually decide who you would like to become. All the people that you admire, you look up to them, you say, wow, they're so amazing. Look at what they've created. Look at who they are. They really know who they are. How do they get there? Do they come out of the womb that way as that person? No. They came out of the womb as a baby like anyone else, and then they took all the raw materials over their lifetime that they developed, skills, talents, abilities, gifts, natural and, and learned. They honed the skills. They focused on something. They created goals, i.e. purpose, and then they pursued it relentlessly. And now they became something, and you go, ah, they know who they are. <laughs> they made who they are. They made who they are. So you start with a vision that's that's created in your imagination. Yes. You are supposed to create who you are in your imagination first. You think that you're in the worst position because you don't already know who you are? No. 
that's an enviable position as compared to people who say, I am what I am and I'll never change. Those people I worry for. Those people I worry for. Healthy individuals are always changing. I hope I'm not moving too fast for you, but this is very important to get. Healthy individuals are always changing. You is a fluid concept to some degree. And you want to keep it a little loose because you got to learn and bend and evolve through time. This version of Roman is an updated version. It's not the same guy who was doing, actually covering this same topic one year ago. This is not the same guy. This is an updated version. This is an update. Right? If they're coming out with new iPhones every year, shouldn't you have a new version of yourself? You're far more important than a smartphone. It's far smarter. Yes, you have to update yourself constantly. This is not even the same version of the guy who gave the talk last week. Because we grow through our experiences. We're becoming wiser. We're learning. Right? And through the gradual learning process, we grow and we become closer and closer and closer and closer to the concepts that we are striving towards. Whether that's a concept of perfection in your mind, we are all moving toward a concept in our imagination. We are trying to fulfill a potential. You never reach it totally. And that's okay because it's it's a journey. But in the quest, you keep achieving these plateaus. And people start to look and they start to marvel. If you're a person who's constantly updating the self, people start to marvel over time. And so you want to be on the level, the highest level of consciousness, actualization, is recognizing that you are whatever you want to be. You become whatever you whatever you whatever you envision yourself to be. Well, what if we don't know what we want? Wants are a choice. It's whatever you choose. Through the pattern of choices, the pattern of choices creates a pattern of actions and that's your personality. The pattern of choices creates the pattern of actions and that's your personality. So if you're wondering, well, how do you get this personality? How will people get to know who I am if I'm constantly growing, I'm constantly changing because a pattern will emerge. And the pattern that emerges is going to be your, known as your personality. But don't stay stagnant. Keep it moving. Keep it fluid. It is your responsibility to constantly update who you are. So let's make sure we're, we're getting these concepts very clearly. How do we get rid of the feeling that we've lost ourselves or we don't know who we are? How do we get rid of that? The first most important thing you have to do is stop trying to please people. That's number one. So if there may be some things right now in your life that are causing you a sense that you don't know who you are. Could be that. Uh, there's a college you want to go to, to, but you don't want to admit to your parents that that's the college you really want to go to. It's causing you to feel like you don't know who you are. Could be that there's uh, a job you want to take or career or a business you want to you want to pursue, but you're afraid to admit to your spouse that that's what you want to do. It's causing you to feel like you don't know who you are. Anytime you're suppressing the self, it can lead you to the sensation of loss of self. So we have to be careful with self-suppression. That needs to be a minimal thing that we do, not too much self-suppression. Some is healthy, some is healthy, but not so much. So we want to only do 15% self-suppression. We want to be 85% expressive, just pursuing loosely exactly what we want and, our, and articulate and assertive as to what we want. So stop pleasing, articulate and be assertive to what you want. We need to remove or allow people to abandon us. So we need to get rid of our fear of abandonment. 
So that's number one. We got to get rid of the people pleasing if we want to know who we are. How do we do this? How do we how do we build this skill? And this is a skill that you build to be able to disappoint people and still feel okay. That's a skill you build. In childhood, if you had healthy parents, you would have been able to build the skill because your parents would have allowed you to disappoint them without becoming too harsh. So therefore, you would have found that you're actually safe in disappointing others. And as a result of seeing that you're actually safe in disappointing others, you would have done it more and you would have built the skill more. That would then allow you to emerge as an authentic person and be who you truly are, if that makes sense to you. So you have to synthesize this reparenting now. The way you synthesize the reparenting now is by picking people and letting them down until you can convince your subconscious mind that you're still safe when you let people down. You have to become very comfortable with being unliked, with being left or abandoned. You have to become comfortable with it. And as you do this, you will start to get the sensation that you know who you are, that you found yourself. Again, it's key that we learn to disappoint others, to let them down, to be assertive, to set boundaries. That is where our authenticity is. You left it back when you stopped setting boundaries or when you didn't assert yourself. The next most important thing is understanding to how to get into the imagination and create the self. Who you want to be is who you are. You are who you want to be. Our wants, our values, our desires, that is intrinsic to, to the identity of the self. In fact, it's the same thing. The identity is the, is the values. The identity is the values. So you have to start creating an idea of what you want to be. Picture her. How does she look? What does she wear? How does she talk? How does she, how does she dress? How does she interact with others? Get a, get a vision of the man you want to present yourself as. And then you wake up every morning. And you manifest yourself as that person over and over again, repeatedly. Yeah. Every day, you do your gratitude meditation. You show yourself grateful for what you have. And then you get on your to-do list. Your to-do list is created out of all the little things that you're going to need to do to reach your, your purpose. Your to-do list is all the little things you're going to have to accomplish in order to reach your ultimate goal. That's how you know where you should be, what you should be doing every single day. Try to minimize the amount of reactive things on your list. The reactive things are all the fires you got to put out for all the people in your life and your job and your house. It's all the little things you got to do just to maintain. Trying to minimize that because you don't want that to be your whole life. Reacting, reacting. You need to be proactive. Proactive is getting a vision of the future, setting goals, moving towards your goals relentlessly. One brick at a time, building, building, building every day by doing your part, doing the one thing that you have to do that day to move forward. So every day you have a to-do list of small things you're doing to reach the larger goal. Choosing your purpose is in sync with choosing the identity. You choose your purpose that is your identity. You're saying, I'm going to become a person who built a homeless shelter, is kind, is generous, is loving, or I'm going to become a person who's running a multi-million dollar tech firm and is sharp and intelligent Whatever you want to become, that is who you are. The rest of the world will catch up. We will catch up. We're not going to know right away. And you're not going to care. 
Of course, we care somewhat about the approval of others, but we don't allow that to be the most important thing in our lives. What's most important is for us to fulfill our purpose. Otherwise, we've created a waste of the raw materials we've been given. The truth is, none of us asked to be born. We're just here. So we might as well make the best of it. And since we see that there's so many people suffering, you might as well get into your purpose, which is going to involve on some level helping to alleviate the pain and the suffering of others, helping to heal others, teaching others, guiding others. That's your purpose. So reach out to fulfill it. You have the potential. You have the capability. In fact, the very materials that you're physically made of is the same materials that they find in the stars. So don't be afraid. Be brave. And pursue relentlessly so that you can be on the trajectory to being healed.